This is one of the most sought after puzzle locks in the world. After solving it, I was left curious to understand it fully. Every little detail. It is so well made, designed and manufactured. The tolerances are perfect. There's no other way to make this puzzle better than it is right now. And this truly deserves praise for the designer who probably sit around hundreds of hours designing this puzzle. For us, solving these puzzles is difficult. We take hours to solve this puzzle. But imagine how difficult it is to come up with a concept, to design it, to build it. It's a whole new level of greatness. Monster of a the whole goal of a puzzle is to make you think harder, to make you think out of the box, to expand your creativity to places you didn't know existed. But to actually come up with this by yourself, to come up with an idea that you know will stump people, that you know will leave people puzzled. That's art. After solving this puzzle, the Pop Lock T12 by Rainier Pop, I immediately knew that I want to know more about it. How was it made? You can't really see what's inside this heavy 2 kilogram block of brass. That's why I asked Rainier Pop, the creator of this puzzle, to share the blueprints of it with us. Seeing it for the first time, I was just waking up, it was like 9 a.m. I was looking at it and my mind was blown. I'm not an engineer, I'm just a regular person solving puzzles. I think it took me a little more than 30 minutes to actually understand what's going on inside. In this video, I'm gonna break down the whole mechanism for you guys from start to end. I will try my best to explain you every little detail of this puzzle and then we'll piece everything together and understand how the solution goes and why it works. Let's go. So first of all, let's take a look at the blueprint. We can see that on the top left of the blueprint, we have three looks at the puzzle. We have the front look, the side look, and the top look. We can see a lot of information going on, but we can also see five different planes that this is divided to. We have plane E, A, D, F and G. And this is what we'll use to explain the whole puzzle. We can see that section A, which is plane A, shows the puzzle from the side in the middle part of it. In section E, we can see the side also, but from the side of it. And in sections F, G and D, we can see the middle of the puzzle with all the cylinders. On the right of section A, we can see two springed pieces. One of them is a small square with a pin that goes up from it and it locks the keyhole lid that is also connected to a springed part inside. To lock it we need to pull the square on the bottom down and then we can rotate the lid all the way and reveal the keyhole of the puzzle. In the back of the lid we can actually see an L shape. This L shape will actually pull on a spring that prevents one of the cylinders from moving but only if we rotate it 180 degrees. This we also have three cylinders inside the keyhole. The keyhole actually consists of three different cylinders. One of them is in section F. The cylinder is located in the back and we'll call it cylinder 3. And then we have sections G and D. The cylinder in section G is the most front cylinder to us and the cylinder in section D is the one in the middle. These two are actually connected and you cannot move one of them without the other. You can see also that in all of the cylinders you have different notches and this will be useful in the end when we finally do the sequence to solve the puzzle. And there's only one sequence that will move all the cylinders to the exact position to unlock the puzzle. On the top of the puzzle you can see four aluminum pieces. Pins. These are the locking pins of the puzzle and we need to release them in order to unlock the shackle. But these pins are actually held by a few mechanisms. One of them is a button on the front of the puzzle, which is actually a wider cylinder with two holes inside. The two locking pins are actually inside this cylinder, but because the spring of this wider pin is much stronger than the spring of the locking pins, it holds them together and only if you push on this cylinder you will be able to release one of the pins. The other locking mechanism of the locking pins is the cylinders themselves. Every one of these cylinders has a different use and we'll go through it right now. So cylinder number three is the simplest use. As you can see the cylinder itself has two cuts, one on top and one on bottom and when you rotate the cylinder 90 degrees it allows two objects on the right and the left to squeeze a little bit inside. Then when you push the buttons that release two locking pins, the spring will push these pins up and because we have place for the object to squeeze, the pin will go up. These are the two pins on the back. All the holes you can see in this puzzle that aren't useful for the solution are holes for assembly. These holes are there so the designer can put all the springs, all the pins inside. I didn't work out the exact order of what goes in and when, but keep in mind when I explain the mechanism that every hole that doesn't have any use, any practical use in the solution has a use in the assembly 
of the puzzle. For example, the two holes beneath the shackle on top of the puzzle are there to insert two pieces. One of them is a spring that will add friction to the back cylinders, to cylinder number three. And the front hole there is to insert the piece that holds the first cylinder with the lid. Let's do a quick break with surprise facts about the Poplock T12 puzzle. First of all, only 2% of the T12's Rainer producers are flawed and can be sold. Usually for Rainer, it takes between a few weeks to a month to design a puzzle. Manufacturing also takes the same time and assembling actually takes between one year and one and a half years. And thanks to Rainer, here's the correct assembly order of the pieces. You can see all the pieces and at the order of the pieces they go inside. You can stop the video right now to try and understand what comes when. And let's go back. In the middle cylinder, which is cylinder two, you can see three notches. Two of them are for the key and two of them are for the locking mechanism of the locking pins. The correct position of this cylinder would be 90 degrees clockwise, which will then allow the two parts on the side with the spring to squeeze inside the cylinder. The two parts that will go inside will then unlock the two locking pins that are closer to the front of the puzzle. And when you push these parts inside, then these locking pins will go up. In the cylinder in the front, we have two locking mechanisms that are very hard to find and very sneaky. One of them is the square we had to pull down to unlock the cover of the keyhole. And the other one is the actual cover of the keyhole, which is showed you before. You have to hold it 180 degrees to the starting position and hold the square to the bottom. Bottom, only then you will be able to actually rotate the cylinder and to rotate it you will have to insert the key but not all the way just half the way or just a little bit inside to move from cylinder to cylinder from the third cylinder to the second and first you will have to just move the key inside more or less if you pull it inside more you will reach the back cylinder and if you pull it out you will reach the outer cylinders the ones in the front once you understand how these cylinders interact with the pins you can actually release the whole four pins these are the pins that you will need to use to fully unlock the puzzle and then you will have only one last step remaining to solve it. It is crucial to understand how these three cylinders work and how they interact with the locking pins since you cannot solve the puzzle without doing that. Welcome back to a few random facts from Greg about the T12. The original concept of the puzzle was a bolt lock locked by bolts. A bolt lock locked by bolts. <laughs> Another rap song for the Arsenal. Rainer thought it's cool, it actually sounds cool and fun, it's like recursive. Also there was a certain part I saw in the blueprint and I had no idea why it's there. It's part number 10, it's a pin that holds disc number 23 from moving. Here's a trick I learned, don't tell anyone I told you about it, but I'm gonna try and predict what will the blue Greg say in a moment. I think it's... Let me think. Yeah, I think I think I got it. I think I got it. Also, another cool thing that I found. Also, another cool thing that I found is I knew it. Nailed it! These two aluminum pins that go all the way through the puzzle prevent the locking pins from popping out of the puzzle. They are inserted after the locking pins have been fully inserted with the spring at the bottom. These pins limit the movement of the locking pins, which is a very cool concept. Once all the locking pins are released, there's one last move to do to solve the puzzle. The pins that I told you about in the last move actually have a notch inside them that allows the locking pins to rotate 90 degrees to each direction. Each locking pins we have just released has one notch that is in the size of the shackle. These notches are all facing the middle of the puzzle, the inside of the puzzle. What we have to do is to make them face the shackle itself. Because of all the tension from the springs and from the locking mechanism from the puzzle, you will have to hold the springs whenever you can to release some of the friction. Then you have to pull the pins a little back inside. Only from one height you will be able to rotate this locking pins to the correct position. Once you do that, you can slide the shackle open and then the puzzle is solved. Now the last thing we have to understand is how the cylinders actually interact with each other. To unlock all the four locking pins, you have to do an exact sequence. You pull on the square and rotate the cover of the keyhole 180 degrees. This will release the first cylinder. Then you can rotate the key inside the first cylinder, which will now move the first and the second one. Then you can push the key all the way inside and rotate the key 90 degrees counterclockwise. This will unlock the back locking pins. Then you can pull the key all the way back and all you have to do is to rotate the key 90 degrees 
counterclockwise again. This will unlock the first set of the locking pins by allowing you to push on the two buttons on the side which will push the locking pins up. And this exact sequence is the only way to unlock all the four locking pins of the puzzle. And now let's do the whole thing from beginning to end and guys try to imagine the mechanism working while I'm executing the solution. So first I will pull on the spring pin and rotate the cover. Then I can move the key all the way inside but that's not the correct move. Instead I have to move the square down and then I can insert the key not all the way but halfway and rotate it 180 degrees. Then I will push it all the way inside, I will rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, pull it out and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise again. This will unlock all the four pins. I will press the buttons here. One, two, and these two as well. Now all the four locking pins are unlocked. What is left to do is to rotate them all to the middle and the puzzle is solved. And this is a work of genius. That's it for today, guys. Like and subscribe to join the puzzle gang. If you haven't watched the solution video, click here and I'll see you guys in the next video. The concept for the puzzle is it's a lock bolt locked by bolts. <laughs>